I'm nervous and excited all at the same time. I don't think I need to own a special edition. I don't think I need to own this book is kind of what I'm saying. I feel like I'm very underwhelmed with the past couple of books in this vlog because I've just read so many really good fantasy things lately that these are good but not great. And so because of that, they're kind of like just they're hitting like the, the meh. So I have a long time to go, which is good and bad because I need answers, you know. Um, but if I devour the second one soon, like let's say right as it came out, who knows when the third one's going to come out because the third one doesn't even have a title or cover or anything yet. So this is the mental spiral that I have gone down. Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with some fairy loot books that I'm actually reading. <laughs> Hi friends, um, we are starting a brand new vlog idea that if this goes well may come back in the future just because I'm really bad at reading books that I get in subscription boxes. So right now I primarily only get um, Fairy Loot, both the YA and the adult box. I did for a while get the Unplugged book box and a long time ago I got Owl Crate, but I'm not even sure I even have any of those anymore. So the goal for this video is I have three to four different books that I've received in a fairy loot box. Um, recently, actually a lot of these are recently, some of these are just because I'm interested in them. There's a reason that these are at the top of my TBR right now. But there's four, three to four, depending on how much time I have. I have three planned and then there's a fourth one that if we have time we'll squeeze in. Just depends on what this month looks like. So... There are four books that I'm hoping to get to that I have all gotten in a fairy loot in some way and this is my way of reading books that I've actually gotten in fairy loot books or boxes because when I have read fairy loot books in the past I have always really really enjoyed them but I am so bad at actually making time for them. So I thought by doing this idea I could kind of capitalize, is that even the right word, um, on the fact that I am really on a fantasy romance mood right now and like a fantasy mood so I picked a lot of books that are either specifically a fantasy romance in some way that I think. So that's my plan. I have four books, but I have started the first one. The first book that I actually started yesterday is This Vicious Grace by Emily Thede. Um, this is the first in this duology. And the second one is coming out, I want to say this year. I know Fairloot has announced they're doing another special edition and I think they're like you're able to purchase this at the beginning slash the middle of August. So First off, this is on my summer TBR. I really, really thought this felt like a nice summer book. Second off, because the sequel is coming out, I want to read this one before I even purchase the second one, just to make sure that this book is worth purchasing a special edition of the second one. So that is the point of this one being on the TBR. But I did start this one last night. I am almost 50. I am 48 pages into this book. I'm in chapter seven. I'm also using a fairy loot bookmark because of course I am. I'm extra. I'll show you how beautiful this, all these fairy loot editions are as we go through because they're genuinely stunning. The sprite edges, the cover, all of this is gorgeous. So this book from a little that I have gathered so far. Um, we follow our, our main character, Alessa, and she is a Finestra, which basically means that she is like crazy powerful, but she amplifies the person that she's going to marry's power, um, and they're called Fonte, and that will save the city and protect the city from some big bad thing. You know, she's got, her power's been passed down from generation to generation, and she's the newest one. However, um, her power is reacting badly because she's been paired and married to three different people and each time she touches them they die so she is struggling with this and so because of that a lot of people look badly upon her there's this um evangelical preacher kind of person who is like standing up in the town and just kind of talking about how bad this is and how it's a it's a sign uh, they need to actually kill her and by killing her they'll save their city because she's actually um something's happened with her power and her power has been warped and so she's really kind of um on the edge here because she knows that she is and like she knows that her power is not working but she has she lives a very lonely life um she lives in this like church building of sorts and she lives alone on the floor because the only people who are supposed to live there 
are her and the person that she marries but of course she keeps not finding the right person um and so she's the only one that's allowed on this floor her guard barely even protects her anymore because they're just like whatever she's just killing everybody I'm not even sure she's worth protecting so there's a lot of fear going around when it comes to her that's kind of where I'm at in the book she's about to have a party where they're going to introduce her to the rest of the Fontes as an option um before it was just she would pick one and go that one and now she's going to meet all of them to see which power she thinks maybe can withhold or is is not going to die basically so that's the point of this i know based on the synopsis there's going to be a guy who comes in later named dante and she's going to end up hiring him as like a bodyguard of sorts because um there are people that are out to get her so i think we've met him i'm not 100 percent sure just based on vibes alone we've met somebody then we don't know his name and i have a feeling that's who it is so not very far into this book i'm hoping to dive into it in the next couple of days or so because i've got plans this weekend so um well by the time you see this i would you've already seen it i'm going to new york city with my friend lauren i'm so excited so there's going to be a vlog you can watch it if you want but um i want to finish this before we go there because i'm not going to be doing much reading while we're there so that's my goal for now is to get to this one. I wanted to start with this one because I do have the audiobook from my library, but it's about I need to like send it back to the library. So I really need to dive into this one. So I've got some household things I need to do. I've got some other stuff here and there that I need to do. So I am hopefully going to listen to this a bunch while I'm doing other things. We'll see. I'll come back to you maybe when I have thoughts on this or if I finish it. I haven't decided depending on how much I dive into this book or not but that's the plan for this video i'll show you if these are worth it i mean this isn't really a like is this box worth it kind of thing because i think the box is worth it already based on the books i've already read and just how beautiful these editions are but kind of is this box worth it we'll see um and um i hope you enjoy Um, I'm here to give you updates because I am finished with this Vicious Grace. So I basically plowed through this in like two days. I listened to the audiobook from my library. It's due today, so it's a good thing I finished it uh, today. Um, and I have interesting feelings. I don't know why I phrased it that way. That was a really weird way of saying basically like I really enjoyed this book but I don't think it's going to be like my next favorite book of all time nor is it going to be like crazy memorable. I think there's a lot about this world and the magic system that's a little confusing honestly um, and I don't fully understand the powers of our main character. I mean, I do. She's basically like an amplifier. Um, she has crazy amounts of power and her power is dependent upon touch. And there are certain people that are called the Fontes. I kind of mentioned this in the first clip, but they have 
magical power like each of them have individual powers and so like her power is to amplify it and there's like a big bad apocalypse that comes i don't know if it's like every year every few years or once in this person's lifetime i don't really know what the like how it happens but apparently it's like this big bad thing and i think every uh whatever the heck she is i can't remember what she's called whatever she is um sees at least one maybe more so that's why I'm a little confused because a lot of the world building is a little confusing. There's a lot of surface level stuff. This does feel like a lot of other YA fantasy books. There's nothing crazy about it. It's definitely more fantasy than romance, which is fine. It does have its romantic elements, which is kind of what I've enjoyed about it. But it's not like crazy original, which is fine. It's kind of hard to be crazy original now. Like you can take the same situations and the same tropes and just kind of like redo them a little bit for your characters, but it's really hard to be crazy original. So I really enjoyed this. I ended up giving it four stars because there's a lot about this book that I love. I love the character of Dante. I feel like he has the most character growth in this book, but actually that's not true. There are some other characters in here as well because at one point she is meeting with all of the Fontes who have these magical powers to try to figure out who the next one's going to be um, and she's decided that she's not going to choose. She chose the first one or she was given the first one. One, She's had three. One of them she's chosen. One of them um, she just randomly picked. She didn't really care. And then one of them, she, I don't know, like something happened where she basically had to choose all of them. And so she just said that she's not going to choose this time. And so she's giving the Fontes the option to be that person, but she's kind of let them into her walls so that she can get to know them a little bit better. And so you do have like a found family vibe because all of them become really, really close. And I really like them. And there is a character in this book named Caleb, who's kind of an asshole at the very beginning. And he does have some good character growth. I will say, like, he's still sassy and sarcastic, but um, he, like, cares more. It's kind of one of those things where, like, his emotions and stuff were hidden under the surface. And so he uses, like, sarcasm as, like, a coping mechanism almost. So that was really fun to read, to see him, because he's, like, not a main character, but he's one of, like, the secondary side characters, um, or secondary main characters, maybe. But he, I don't know, there's just something about him that I really like. But I love this book. It was really good. I'm having trouble kind of explaining my thoughts on it because like I said, there's not a whole lot to it. I don't think I am going to purchase the second one. I think like this was really good. I'm glad I've read it. I am going to pick up the second one when it comes out. I believe it comes out in December this year or November. It's in this in like the later half of the year, but I don't think I need like a special edition of it. I'm interested. I definitely like the ending definitely left me wanting more, but I don't think I need to own a special edition. I don't think I need to own this book is kind of what I'm saying. So moral of the story is this one was not like, oh my God, this is the best, most amazing book I've ever read. It's a new favorite, which has been the case with some of my recent fairy loots, but I still really enjoyed it. I'm still really glad that I read it because it's not what I expected. The cover, which I don't have on me, but the cover was giving me like Circe and Greek mythology vibes and I don't know if it was the colors or what it was but there was something about it that was giving me those vibes but actually I think it has either Spanish or Italian influence. I think I'm leaning more towards Italian is what's happening. Um, so it gives me the same vibes of Kingdom of the Wicked so if you like the setting of Kingdom of the Wicked then you would enjoy this book. It's very different worlds, very different stories, plot lines. There's nothing else about these books that are similar except for like the setting. So I definitely didn't expect that going in. I don't know what I expected going in, but it wasn't that. So I really enjoyed it. I'm glad that I've read it. Um, I can now move on to something else, but this is definitely like good. It was very middle of the road. It still got four stars, like I mentioned, but it's a pretty low four star. It was very like, I have enjoyed my time reading this. I am glad that I read this. There were definitely moments that I went, oh, swoon, and moments that I was really on the edge of my seat, and moments that I was stressed, and moments that I laughed out loud. So I had all of the emotions, but it's not like, oh my god, I want to recommend this book to every single person who's ever, you know, watched a video of mine, which is what I like to do with a lot of my favorites. So I have like that. I guess issue. But I finished it, yay. Um, and now I can move on to the second one, which I don't have on me. So let me grab that real quick. So the next book that I'm going to be picking up is Divine Arrivals. And this is by Rebecca Ross. This is the Beautiful Fairy Loot Edition. I will plop the original up here because they're so different, which is really interesting. This one does have a sequel as well, but I don't think it comes out until next year. I looked it up on Goodreads and now I've forgotten what it was. But this is a 
fantasy book. This was my, I think my most recent fairy loot. I really enjoyed that unboxing. It's so pretty um, as well. So it says two rivals, two stories, two hearts, one fate. And this book specifically, according to the synopsis, follows our main character Iris and our other main character Roman, who are both um, uh, fighting each other in a competition of sorts for uh, the columnist promotion at the Oath Gazette. And it takes place during this like war of the gods kind of thing and so they're like uh reporting on this war but it's the two of them and there's like a romance between them but I saw Ashley from Frog to Fiction talking about this book recently and she said it gives more historical historical like fiction vibes rather than like fantasy it still has fantasy as like the number one genre when you look at it on Goodreads but the vibes it's more historically set than anything else. So I kind of am glad going in knowing that because I was going to be expecting, I mean, it kind of like, you can kind of tell it gives like World War II vibes based on this cover. So I was kind of already expecting that going in, but I'm, I'm glad I know that because then I'm not going to try to find all of those fantasy elements because it's in a fairy loot. It is a fantasy book. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. I will be taking this with me this weekend is the weekend that we're going to New York City. So I am going to be reading this one. I do have a copy of it. I found it on Kindle Unlimited as well. So I don't have to bring like this physical book with me. I can just bring my Kindle, which is great. So I'm going to be reading that one um, on the plane. And, and if I have any spare time, I don't think I will have too much. But I do have the audiobook on Scribd. So I'll be like multitasking as well. But this is my next book. I will come to you probably when I get back from New York with thoughts on this book and what kind of my first impressions are unless I finish it. I mean, it's not a big book, but I don't expect I will be reading that much either way because I'm really bad at focusing um, when traveling. So we'll see. We'll see how much I get read, but I'm thinking not too much so I can come to you with first thoughts like I did with This Vicious Grace. But this is my next book, so I'm excited to see how it goes. I'll let you know my thoughts when I've started it. Hello. Um, I'm here because I am a little over halfway through Divine Rivals. I'm not just throwing things all over the floor. I'm halfway through Divine Rivals. So I thought I would tell you some of my thoughts. Um, I'm actually uh, well, not well over, but I'm definitely in like the 60% over the 50%. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm not sure where it's going to go. I mean, I am kind of sure because I'm just the beginning of like I'm near the end of part two beginning of part three. Um, and I think there's only three parts. And so we're about to see a lot of the war side of things because in the past couple of volumes, we haven't really gotten into that side of things yet. Like the war is present in everything. They always talk about it, but our characters have not been like they haven't been at the front lines or haven't been really doing anything besides just like competing for the spot and so now we're getting them in the like closer to the front lines they're actually doing things 
related to the war. So we're about to see a lot more of that. So the next part might not be the most fun for me personally, because I'm not a huge fan of all the war stuff. But um, I'm interested to see where we're going because I'm mentally connected to our characters and men emotionally might be a better word emotionally connected to our characters um and there is the fantastical elements to this it's not as fantastical as some of the other books that I've read other books I'm going to read in this video alone but I knew that going in I knew it was going to be very historical fantasy more historical I guess than fantasy the fantasy is very low so if you are like a historical fiction person and you want to get into fantasy this is definitely a good book to start with because the fantastical elements are very I don't want to say magical realism because it's not it's more than that but it has that sort of vibe to it it's very like these gods are warring and if I can remember correctly kind of what's happened so far um as far as the mythology around this war it's two gods feuding but really if I understand correctly because some of that part is a little confusing it's one god who's mad at another god because the other god is sleeping and so this god is throwing a fit and starting a war and hopes that the other god will wake up but now that we're kind of into the story we're not sure the other god is actually asleep or alive like I don't know what's going on with that other god um it's still very confusing like our characters are kind of figuring out what happened a little bit as well as just kind of like dealing with the war so we've got our main character iris whose brother fought is fighting in the war but she hasn't heard from him since he went off to war which was six months ago so there's this phenomenon that is happening between her and our other main character um but she doesn't know that it's him but he knows that it's her but she's kind of like been writing these letters to her friend um and like slipping them under her door and they've like magically gone to him and so he figured out who she was right away because of the way that she was writing and it's Roman the other guy the other main guy in this book so the two of them are like competing for the same spot on the same paper and then they end up basically both being war correspondents and so she goes basically to the front line. It's not quite the front line. The front line is still a little ways off, but like she's at this village that's super close and is like helping the medical staff a little bit um, with some of the injured. And then she's about to go to the front. And so she's also trying to figure out what happened to her brother because no one can tell her what's going on because no one really knows. And she is just trying to get an answer because she hasn't heard anything from him, nor has she heard that he's MIA either. So she's just kind of like, I just, I want to know one way or the other if he's alive or not, because I haven't even heard if he's not. And so she is trying to figure out what's going on with her brother. So you have that element as well. And then you've got a little bit of a um, crush romance blossoming between the two of them. So I think it's pretty good. I mean, the fantastical elements are more interesting than I thought they were going to be. There's a lot more to this world. Like the world building itself is kind of confusing. Like I said, like, I think I know what's going on. I don't know if that's because our main characters are figuring it out. Like we're figuring it out with them or if there is just like, it's not being described very well as far as what happened. So I don't, know really what's going on as far as the world building wise and i think maybe our, our author is relying heavily on the fact that this is set in like very very similar to us it's kind of set in like a world war ii setting but like add in gods as far as magical beings and you like you're not seeing the gods the war is kind of like in the gods names um and so there are like a couple of mythical creature-esque people um that do show up but it's very much reminiscent of like that time period so I don't know if the author is heavily relying on that fact but there's definitely some elements of world building um that I'm confused about and I can't figure out if that's on purpose or not so that's I guess my biggest complaint right now I'm very interested I can't like put it down I keep wanting to pick it up and read it which is good but it's it kind of feels like the same vein as the other book that I read in this vlog which is it's going to be good I'm very interested in it I don't need a special edition of the second book which comes out later this year I will want to read the second book I think depending on how this book ends I'll probably want to pick it up so I will be interested to see how it continues but as far as like the story goes 
it's kind of it's it's a good story i'm invested when i'm reading it but it's not going to be super memorable so um i feel like i'm very underwhelmed with the past couple of books in this vlog because i've just read so many really good fantasy things lately that these are good but not great and so because of that they're kind of like just they're hitting like the the meh the middle um section i still think that this one could potentially get a four star three and a half four star but it is not going to be like my new favorite thing of all time so um yeah i'm very interested i still want to keep reading it i'll come back to you when i have finished it like i said we're in the last little like section of this book so things are about to go down um and there's definitely some stuff that's gonna happen i think i've got about a hundred no i've got less than 100 pages i've probably got about 56 no that's not right I cannot math right now. Yeah, I've got a little over 100. That's what I thought. Sorry, my brain could not figure out where I was. I've got a little over 100 pages left, so I'm definitely getting towards the end. I'm very interested to see how it's going to continue, um, but I think this is good, but not great, you know? So I'm interested to see where we're going to go because I've seen a lot of reviews of this where people are like, raving about it and loving it and i'm just like is it something i'm missing or are we have we just haven't gotten to that point yet like i thought i've seen a lot of like arc reviews of this where people are just like in love with this story and so i just there's definitely some heartbreaking moments because it is set during war but like nothing has happened yet so i guess whatever the big big thing that everyone's freaking out about is probably going to be in the second section or the last section of this book so i'll let you know when i get to the end if my opinions have changed but right now we're still we're very middle of the road very much the same as this vicious grace i think i do enjoy this one more than this vicious grace but it's still kind of same vibe of like this is interesting just kind of okay you know hello i'm here because i was able to finish divine arrivals last night and i ended up giving it a four star it just got better honestly the ending was so good the romantic elements really kind of came to the forefront at the end and or near the end and there's a lot of like really beautiful moments and i just i loved it which is weird because like the last section is very frontline war heavy um and i would definitely like there's definitely some tougher scenes of like actual Maybe not fighting but like being on the front and like the trauma from that so if that's something that's not like your thing maybe look into it see if someone like it's not necessarily like a trigger warning but it's like there's definitely some more upfront stuff that happens so just kind of putting that out there um if you are someone who wants to read this book and that thing is not your thing but i thought it was really interesting the fantastical elements really kind of came to the forefront as well especially near like the very very end and i think based on how this ended and i did already look into the synopsis of the second book the second book is going to be significantly more fantastical than this one is but we needed this one obviously to set everything up i really just loved it it was really sweet and um heartbreaking and like i had all the emotions um so it's no longer a middle of the road book it's bummed way up it is very good highly recommend honestly if historical fiction slash fantasy is your thing um the typewriters that were included in this are like fantastical and so i really liked that story as well there's just a lot with this that i really liked it's very found family as well which is very sweet and we just kind of see like iris and rowan but mostly iris come into her own it is in third person um but the audiobook i listened to had two narrators because we were in third person but we kind of switched back and forth between their perspectives and then of course there's a bunch of letters they send back and forth so it's kind of fun to hear the two voices there's one female one male um voice in this and i just kind of really liked that I thought the audiobook was produced very well, but I highly recommend. I don't know if I'll get, it depends on what the second one looks like. I'm sure Fairly it's going to do a special edition of the second one. So depending on what that looks like, I might pick it up, but it's not one that like I need to have. I just, I do want to read it. I enjoyed this one more than the first one, which is very good. So I just wanted to come on real quick and tell you I finished it. I loved it. It got better. I can't really tell you too much about it because it's literally the end so lots of spoilers but four stars i think i think i ended up giving vicious grace four stars as well but i think i'm gonna bump that down to a 3.5 just because of 
like I've, I've just read it and I've already forgotten a lot about it. So, um, I think it's what I'm gonna do. But so that one was great. And so I wanted to come on here and tell you kind of what the next one was because I have jury duty today and I'm so excited. Can you tell? Um, so I don't know how long it's gonna be. It might not be very long. I'm planning for the whole day just in case. So the next book that I'm going to read, I'm gonna tell you here because I'm probably gonna read it mostly while I'm waiting. And that is The Foxglove King. I've taken the cover off of it already. Isn't it beautiful? Um, I'll show you what the entire book looks like because it's genuinely stunning um but I've forgotten what it's actually about but I've heard good things it's an adult this is one of the adult books I think this was the very first adult fairy loot I got if it wasn't the first and it was the second I can't remember I think it was the second now that I'm thinking about it but um so this is what I'm going to be reading next I don't really have a lot of opinions um I don't really know what the plot's gonna be about because like what this you know synopsis says and what actually is happening are oftentimes very different things so I'll come back to you when I have started this or if I read this in one day I don't know it's kind of big so we'll see I do have the audiobook but um I still don't think I could finish this in one day but I'll come back to you with thoughts whenever I have them but this is the next one um that I'm gonna be picking up Hello, it's me. I'm here to let you know that I finished the Fox Club thing super late last night. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It might even be a 4.5. I haven't put it through Copile yet, so I'm not sure if it's four or 4.5. This is definitely my favorite of the three that I've read in this vlog. 
and I I need the second one you know so I looked online and it looks like there is going to be three of these which is good but the second one doesn't come out until April of next year so I have a long time to go which is good and bad because I need answers you know um but if I devour the second one soon like let's say right as it came out who knows when the third one's gonna come out because the third one doesn't even have a title or cover or anything yet so this is the mental spiral that I have gone down the moral of the story <laughs> is this book was really really good it didn't quite scrape the five star because like it was good but it wasn't like one of my favorites as far as um like fantasy romance and fantasies go and just some other books that I've really really enjoyed and got given five stars this one didn't quite reach that also there was a lot of stuff like near the end when you get to those like climactic moments where like things are revealed and I don't quite understand what was revealed like I do enough to where I continue to enjoy the story I don't know if it was super vague because like we as the readers aren't supposed to know because our main characters don't really know what's going on um but there's a lot of like vague statements thrown around by a couple of characters about like the future and what this means for our world and like things that had happened in the end of this book and I don't really know what any of that means so I'm thinking it's probably because like our characters don't know what that means so like we're not supposed to know what it means either but there's definitely some questions I have so I didn't quite give it the full five star but I definitely enjoyed it so I didn't really tell you at all what this book was about it follows our main character Lore who grew up in the catacombs of this city she has magic that is connected to death which is called I can't ever remember what it's called um mortem maybe something like that and basically she has the ability to like raise things from the dead kind of uh so she has this affinity towards death and so because of that she like keeps her magic hidden but she is a poison runner for a couple of um like drug kingpins in this world poison things like belladonna like that is used as a drug and so yes it slowly poisons you but it gives you like a high as you do it and so um she she's part of this drug trade kind of thing if you will and she's a really good spy and a liar and all those kinds of stuff and so in, near the beginning of this book she does a poison run that goes bad and she's convinced because of her magic and because of just the situation that she's in that she's either going to be sent to the stake and burned or she's going to be sent to this specific aisle place which is their prison and I think it's like I don't really know what the bad part about it is. I just think it's like the island where their prison is. Um, but everyone sounds like it's the worst thing ever. I mean, like going to prison's not great, but I don't know if it's like extra bad because it's this prison. But um, instead of that, the king steps in and asks her to do some spying for him. So she's thrust in this court and gets to know the prince, Bastion, a little bit better. And then she also kind of has like a bodyguard of sorts who's named Gabriel, um, who is basically like this world's equivalent of a monk. And so he's her protector. And so it's the three of them. So you do have... <sighs> I'm, he I'm really, really hesitant to call it a love triangle because it's not. It's lots of misunderstanding and it's very clear... That Laura's attracted to one sp person specifically and then the other person she's just very close with and like doesn't feel romantically attached to at least where the first book is but she cares a lot about this person so a love triangle in the sense of I'm afraid the next book is going to based on how this book ended and some stuff that came out we're going to push the love triangle for that other person but I don't know I'm just nervous you know so I liked how they the author did this because it wasn't really a love triangle. I mean, there was just, there was clear, there was clearly one person that she was attracted to and the other one she wasn't attracted to in the same way. So I liked that, but I'm worried where this is going to go. I could very easily see one of our characters pulling a Tamlin um, from Akatar. I don't know if that's what she's going to do with these books, but I could very easily see that because he 
there's a lot of similarities between this. I'm trying to be super vague so I don't spoil anything, but um, there's a lot of similarities between one character and the Tamlin character from Akatar with like being there for Lore at the beginning and kind of being in her corner and then blinded by what is good and right and things of that nature and what he sees as the world. And because of that, there is a lot of red flags scattered along the way. So I don't know if that's what the author is going to do, but there's definitely some stuff that's been laid that I could see the potential to do that. But the fact that I've talked a lot about this probably tells you that I really enjoyed this. Um, again, not my favorite thing of all time. Like I still had a good time reading it and I was clearly hooked because I think I read like the second half of this book in a day, maybe more than that because I think I came back to you like I, I introduced this book and then I didn't talk about it at all so this was very good I really enjoyed it I'm excited to see where the second one's gonna go um I'm nervous about the distance between when I read this and when the second one comes out so we'll have to see if I can maybe how much of this will stay in my head because first of all I have the worst memory ever but I don't really know how much of this is going to be important to, I don't know like things things are happening and I set up the second one very well. So I finished this one and this one was a fantastic and I think that's where I'm going to end this vlog. Um, I ended up reading three things which is great. It went from okay and it just got better because we started with The Vicious Grace which got three and a half stars. We did Divine Rivals which got four and then Foxglove King which got four or four and a half. So I think it got better. I think I put a lot of pressure on myself to like these books because I really enjoyed some books in the past by Fairy Loot, but I think I, like not every single book that comes in a subscription box is going to be for everybody. Yes, this is a fantasy specific subscription box, so nine times out of ten it's going to be a really good book. Like not everything's going to be hit and that's fine, but I got through some things that I've had my eye on. Like I've been wanting to read this Vicious Grace for a very long time. This one was newer and it sounded really interesting and the Foxglove King I've heard nothing but good things about and I haven't read an adult fantasy. Although the adult elements in this, usually when you say adult fantasy it's because there are like sexual scenes and smutty scenes and things like that, but this one didn't really have that. Um, so I think it's adult because of the other. I can see this being like, Goodreads says this is adult, but I think it could be in that new adult adult range. But our main character, Lore, is 23. And everyone else is at least 24 because like there's a big celebration when you turn 24 in this world and she doesn't have it until the end of the book. So they are older, which is good, but they do kind of act younger. So I don't know. Do with that information what you will. But I really enjoyed my time. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you'd love to see another installment of this. And if you are a Fairly subscriber and you know the types of books that they have, if there's one specific that you'd like to see, because I have, I just have so many, you know? Um, but this was great. I got through some books that I've had on my list. I'm very excited about that. And I, I would call this video a success. I would. So that you guys enjoyed whatever this experience was. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in today's vlog. I would love to know your thoughts on them or if you are a fair loot or just a book subscription box person. Are you good at reading books? Because I am not but I'm trying to get better. If you like this video and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you're part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links so check all that out and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!